What's going on guys? Waco from Revolution here at LVMH Watch Week in Singapore with Ricardo Guadalupe, CEO of Hublot. How are you, sir? Very well. And you, Wake? Fantastic. You know, I'm so honored to be here. I'm so happy that you guys are in our hometown. So tell me, why Singapore, first of all? Well, I would say that, um, as you know, the first one that we did was in Dubai. So LVMH Watch Week in Dubai uh, 2020, just before COVID. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we we thought uh, we should go outside, so outside Switzerland, because as you know, we have watches and wonders that's coming uh, end of March uh, in Switzerland, in Geneva. And, uh, you know, Southeast Asia, I think, is a very important market. It's a booming market. I think last year they did an incredible performance here in the different countries, uh, Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia. So I thought Singapore is a nice hub. We can bring people from uh, from Japan, uh, from we have people from Hong Kong coming, from Middle East, uh, it's easy, from Europe as well. So I think it's a nice place to be. Well, thank you very much for being here. You know, what I find extraordinary was, you mentioned Dubai Watch Week, uh, I'm sorry, you mentioned LVMH Watch Week in Dubai, which was the last fair that we all attended before the COVID pandemic, you know? And what we all went through in the period in between that was such a strange and crazy moment. But what was really interesting was that watches became even more successful. Watches became even more integral to, to human culture. Why is it, why did that happen? Yeah, I think it's an interesting question during uh, COVID, of course, uh, in 2020, in the middle of the crisis, we were not uh, that positive. I was even myself not that positive, and I thought it will take some more time to come back to the numbers of 2019. And uh, we have seen 2021 was very good year. 2022 was a record year again, and uh, we see the Swiss watch industry having also incredible uh, exports. It's going to be a record year 2022 as well uh, for Ubro, and I think. Yeah, there was, I think, a new flow of consumer, a new flow of new generation uh, uh, of consumers coming uh, to the luxury watches. Maybe we thought that everybody will wear uh, a connected watch, but it's not the case. <laughs> yeah. I think everybody has the same phone already. I think we want something different on our wrist, uh, something that uh, can identify ourselves, express who we are. And we are, we are seeing really the young generation being interested by mechanical watches. No, that's a wonderful thing to see. Um, so I remember uh, in LVMH Watch Week in Dubai, you launched the Integral, right? Which yes. is the Big Bang with the integrated bracelet. Um, and now we see a rainbow version of that. And I love the creativity you've applied to this in both the chronograph and the time only version where you have this beautiful color gradation for the sapphires and the bezel, but now you've extended that pattern into the bracelet. Tell me about that, man. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. The rainbow, we started already uh, a few years ago by coming with a Big Bang uh, Onico and Rambo and uh, this year we decided uh, to go uh, all over uh, the watch uh, within including the bracelet so we can see here uh, of course uh, baguette uh, bezel uh, stones on the case and the full bracelet with this uh, with these colors of the rainbow where you can see the different shades uh, of colors and I think yeah the result is quite amazing and we're talking about close to uh, 1,000 stones that are set, so quite a, a big work to do to find the right uh, tones and colors to get uh, these uh, beautiful rainbow colors. You know, I think Hublot is at its best when it's being incredibly creative like this, expressing itself through color, through innovation, and so on. And I think it's the perfect moment for Hublot also because this is the moment where we're re-embracing like a civilization and humanity. You know, you guys just did the World Cup and it was the first time, you know, we, everyone was super worried, is this going to happen? And in fact, not only did it happen, it was a phenomenal World Cup, you know, as well, especially for Argentina. <laughs> you know, like, um, so, okay, let's go from there to talk about uh, one of the things that you've also innovated, which is a colored sapphire crystal, right? And we have an amazing color. It's like a neon yellow, and the name of the watch is the, well, the name of the material is Saxem. Tell us a little bit about this, sir. <clears throat> yes, absolutely. As you know, I think we are really the leaders in uh, manufacturing sapphire watches. We came with the first one in 2016 with the crystal clear sapphires. Since then, we have developed also colors. We had yellow we had the orange and last year the purple. Right. And uh, yeah, this one, we wanted to have a luminescent color. So we worked on this uh, yellow neon. It has taken us more or less three to four years of development because the manufacturing of sapphire is very complicated, specifically uh, growing the raw materials. So, so it takes at least three months every time. It's a cycle of growing materials. So to find the right color, uh, it's complicated. We call it Saxon because with a 
I would say standard sapphire, we cannot get this uh, luminescent color. So we added some uh, minerals, uh, earth minerals, uh, to, to really give this color to, to the sapphire, because at the end, it's very similar to sapphire, it's as hard of sapphire, and uh, I think the, the result is quite amazing. And here, we have used also our uh, complicated uh, movement right. uh, in-house, tourbillon uh, with automatic uh, rotor, micro rotor at 12 o'clock, and uh, with the uh, sapphire bridges that give that the movement participates as well to the design of the watch. Oh yeah, I love the fact that you use sapphire bridges in this exactly. movement as well. So, you know, Ricardo, I want to just bring this watch up. So this is a purple sapphire <coughs> spirit of Big Bang. And I love the expressiveness that you guys have had in terms of color. Now you mentioned that you brought this color into the Big Bang family last year, but now Absolutely. you brought it into the spirit of Big Bang. And that's a great looking watch as well. Tell me about this model and how this colorway fits perfectly into it. Yes, uh, as you said, we came with the Big Bang uh, Tourbillon Automatic last year uh, in purple sapphire. And now uh, we have uh, used this sapphire in the spirit of Big Bang. And the spirit of Big Bang is a collection that is part uh, of the shaped collection in which you have the spirit, tonal shape and the square also right. uh, in that. And I, I, this collection now is uh, quite important. It's our third pillar. It represents close to 20% of our sales, right. uh, very high value uh, with the incredible products. And here we have also our own uh, uh, tonal shape uh, tourbillon caliber that is totally 100% made uh, in house. Phenomenal. You know, and one of the things I know that's very important to you also is the preservation of this planet, right? And so you have got a great association with the Sorai Foundation, founded by Kevin Peterson, which uh, has resulted in this beautiful watch that's uh, trying to help save rhinos from being poached, which is incredibly admirable. And, uh, you know, if you're a rhino poacher, you are a very bad person. So, uh, But I love the fact that you're, <laughs> you're raising money to, to help um, yeah. bring awareness to this issue and to help solve it as well. But I have to say, just based on the watch alone, it's so cool. Like, I absolutely love this. Um, tell me about this really extraordinary work of yes. design. So this is uh, the third edition that we do with Sorai. So we have been inspired by the nature of uh, South Africa and the Kruger Park in particular. And of course, the first one was a sand beige ceramic inspired by the bush. Uh, in summer. The second one was a green inspired by the bush in winter. And this one has been inspired by the sunset. Right. So the sunset, of course, is the most beautiful moment in nature that we can have. But at the same time, it is the most dangerous moment for rhinos because it's the moment where they are poached. And after during the night, uh, the, the, the poacher cut the horn. So it's at the same time very nice, but also very dangerous moment. But the inspiration comes from the sunset colors, uh, kind of rainbow colors as well, and uh, using a gray ceramic uh, case really uh, cool. that uh, is inspired by the skin of, uh, of the rhinos. So on every watch, uh, we, we, we give back uh, money and we try to help specifically the rangers to, to get the right materials, for instance, uh, to really fight uh, against the, the poaching of rhinos, specifically in the Kruger Park. Nice. And uh, I see that you've, of course, got this current release system. It's basically a one-click system. And exactly. you've got an additional strap uh, here and as the well. Velcro. Uh, you know, I love Velcro straps. Yeah. Like, why do you think it is that everyone wants to wear a Velcro strap now? It's just so I easy. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's so comfortable. Yeah. You know, you can adjust the size very easily, right. depending on... Uh, on um, if you are, you know, during the day or the night, if your wrist is a bigger, bigger than uh, usual, so you can really adjust it, it's fantastic, very comfortable. But you know, it's interesting also, because I just uh, spent Christmas and New Year's in Los Angeles, right? And hey, hey, there's been like a fundamental change in terms of the way people are dressing, you know, even at the high luxury um, uh, segment. And it, it was interesting to me also because Los Angeles has always been on the forefront of the casualization, you know, like, but very um, elegant casualization. Yes. And like everywhere I went, everyone was just wearing basically really beautiful, like sweat, sweatpants and like, you know, and hoodies and stuff like that. And when you think about it, it's like watches like Hublot's that fit perfectly this lifestyle. They give you this adaptability and this elegance without necessarily having to be stiff and formal, you know? Yeah, I fully agree. And uh, the example of this uh, neon yellow, I think, I was saying, who is going to buy this kind of watch? I said, a cool guy, you know, that is dressed with a t-shirt. Yes. Maybe has a fluo sneakers yes. and he will put a, a fluo Big Bang Toby on the wrist. Totally you know? agree. So, you know, what's interesting is that, that you guys have been around long enough. You've had achieved as, uh, enough success that you can actually be, like, do a bit of a retrospective on Hublot and go back to the very classics mm. of the, uh, and origins of the brand. Tell me about what this collection represents to Hublot. Yeah, this is the, the classic uh, Fusion original inspired by the classic original that was 
uh, created in 1980, the, the foundation of the brand Hublot that we call the first fusion because it was uh, 18 karat uh, yellow gold with the first time a rubber strap in 1980. And I thought, I thought it was the right moment, you know, after the Big Bang, 18 years of Big Bang, um, to come back to our roots and uh, to, to give a revival to, to the first uh, Hublot watch that was created in 1980. It's more inspired because still it remains a classic fusion mm -hmm. uh, with a triple uh, deployment uh, clasp. Yeah. The size also, so we, we come back to more 40, 41 millimeter right. uh, size for, for men. Uh, the 38 is a unisex, yeah. uh, no gender, and the 33 millimeter. Also using ceramic as well, because uh, the ceramic is our standard material now, and the titanium version. It's, it's amazing to see how enduring the design has been. You know, like, so, I mean, obviously yeah. you guys have done so much to compel it uh, forward and to make it so relevant for today, but like this design, it just endures, you know, and yeah. the best designs do. I have to say, Ricardo, and I think that you might agree with me, because I, I, the 38 is really special, because the proportion, yeah. You know, I, I love the 1980s. I, I was around in the 1980s. You know, I, I love the whole, you know, like Miami Vice, the Ferrari Testarossa, mm. the culture of that era. And I love this watch because it really reminds me of the kind of proportions of the watches of that time. Absolutely, I agree, yeah. And I think uh, this watch, as I said, is really uh, can be worn either by men or, or, or women. But yeah. the size is really perfect. I love it. Yeah. And then let's go from that to the smallest version of the watch, um, which is this one. 33 millimeter. 33 millimeter and... Titanium uh, case. I, think, I believe this is the one that the other two are mechanical, this one's quartz, correct? Exactly. Right. But still, lovely watch yeah. and also great design. But I must say that uh, in 1980, the first... Uh, was quartz, uh, yeah. It was a quartz yeah. watch, yeah. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, there were so many cool watches that came out of that period, you know, yeah. and, and the Hublot is definitely one of them. Yeah. So, Ricardo, thank you so very much. Um, uh, again, we really appreciate you coming to Singapore. Thank you for hanging out in our region and having this fair. And thank you for being innovative and making great watches. Thank you. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Wei. Pleasure's mine, sir. Thank you. Cheers. Thank Bye. you.